high pile one if you chose the um, amethyst point generator is what it's supposed to be called this is going to be your reading all right so let's just get right into it all right so let's see what um, what the energy is, uh, the connecting uh, real energy is. And here we have girl talk, time with friends, moving on, happily single, living in the moment, having fun. Definitely talking about a separation in this connection. And then we also have metamorphosis. And this is kind of like the direction where um, this connection is going. Okay, so we definitely have, there's some kind of a split or a separation in the energy here. Um, both of you going kind of along your own path. Let's see what this person, how this person is feeling about this connection overall. Pile one's person, how are they thinking and feeling uh, towards pile one and this connection? one's person what are they thinking and feeling towards this connection and towards pile one please let's get five cards pile one's person we got the king of cups in reverse pile one's person We've got the strength card. Pile one's person. What are they thinking and feeling towards pile one and or this connection? The magician in reverse. Let's get two more cards for pile one's person. We've got the hermit. Pile one's person. One more card, please. I would say two. <laughs> we got uh, the five of wands popping out along with the three of pentacles. Okay, so your person really is just kind of doing their own thing. Pile one. Um, uh, they're not really seeming too overly concerned about this connection. This feels like they're embarking on a whole new path. And this is, we've got three major arcana cards, right? One, two, three in a row. And so this is like the beginning. Of course, we've got metamorphosis. And so this is very much directing us towards the fact that this person is um, closing out. Like they've closed out a major life cycle and they are beginning on another one. But they are having, they may be having some doubts though as to whether or not um, including this connection or completely deviating from this connection or disconnecting this connection is part of what their new life path is supposed to be. And having doubts as to whether or not they're going to be able to manifest the life that they want. I'm not sure if this, you know, manifesting the life that they want, if, if that doubt is coming from um, because they don't, they're not in a connection with you right now or what, you know, what the situation is. Um, they may just be focusing on work on a, on a team project on, you know, um, building their, their financial skills or, you know, their, their skills of trade or something like that. Just complete, like their, their focus, I feel like their focus for the most part is not even on this connection. It's like their path feels like it's completely like deviated from yours. And as far as like this connection goes, they are wanting, I don't know if they're wanting a permanent break from it, but with the hermit here, the hermit here is like alone time. Um, so they may or may not be coming into a space where they just, they don't want a relationship 
at all or they don't want the same kind of connection that they've had with you you know if like I'm speaking like in terms of overall relationships so if the two of you if your person you and your person had a romantic relationship it's like they're kind of going into this cycle where they're not even wanting a commitment they're not wanting a relationship they're wanting to focus their time and their energy and their efforts into another area in their life and it feels more like um, an area of life that has to deal with their finances their career schooling things like that um, they're they are for the most part they're in an okay place I'm not gonna say that they're in a good place or a bad place they're kind of in a new neutral space right now um, as far as the connection is for, uh, concerned and just really in life in general um, but your person is definitely going through a huge huge transformation a whole new transformation so let's get some more information uh, give us more more clues about what this person is thinking and feeling pile one's person This person is enjoying being single. All right, we've got North Node energy coming through, Neptune, and then we also have, um, I can't even see what that is. <laughs> I'm not sure. Um, I'll show the, uh, the thing to you. So North Node, North Node, so this is more, indic this is indicative of new life path, of life purpose. So your person is is focusing on trying to find their path trying to find their way trying to align with what they feel their purpose for this lifetime may, might be okay um which they've been very confused about I feel like their life, like their purpose and their calling, trying to find out why they're here. They may be on the precipice of some kind of an awakening. I don't know if it's like a spiritual awakening, an emotional awakening, a mental. I'm not really quite sure what kind of a, an awakening it's going to be, but um, they've been having a really difficult time up to this point, trying to figure out why they're here, what they're meant to do. Um, and I kind of feel like that's why they're letting relationships like romantic relationships go on the back burner I'm not saying that they're not going to date or you know but like as far as a long-term commitment or a relationship where it's going to require a lot of their energy and effort they're going to let those kinds of relationships for now take a, a back uh, burner because they're really wanting to focus on finding out who they are finding out why they're here um, trying to find a sense within themselves of feeling you know happy and satisfied it's like they're really understanding in order for them to be in a happy relationship with someone else they have to figure out how to be happy within themselves first and that they've been having a really hard time uh, with doing that up to this point all right let's pull some more cards uh, pile one's person their energy in this connection pile one's person's energy towards this connection there we go more transformation your person is really going through it you guys they are really going through it um, I'm not saying they're having a hard time with this but something is kicking off a major life cycle they like and it just may be their soul's journey up to this point but they are really focusing on waking up or figuring out what their life purpose is like that's a really big deal to them they're they're really wanting to know 
why they're here, who they are and why they're here. They're looking for a sense of a sense of fulfillment, a sense of wholeness. And this is a major life cycle, so this could take them a while. This kind of a cycle takes a while for the most part. Most people, when they are um, embarking on this kind of a path where they're trying to figure out who they are and why they're here, this is usually something that can take a while to unfold. Um, let's see, here we've got the horned cactus with resourcefulness. And we also have the Fool's Embrace with Transmuting Pain, yeah. So the Fool, that reminds me of the Fool in Tarot, which is a whole new, like they're beginning, starting all over again. The, the slate, the path is wiped completely clean and they're just starting over. Um, yeah, as far as their energy goes towards this connection with you, Pile One, their mind is just not in it. Their heart's not in it, not because of you know, you or your worth or anything like that. They are more focused on devoting their energy on their path, on, you know, their journey during this lifetime. That's where their energy is going. Um, let's see. We're going to kind of see if we can find out what the outcome of this might end up being. Pile one's person. What can pile one expect? What outcome can pile one expect at this time as far as this connection goes? True love. It says this is the romance of a lifetime. So this person may end up after all of this is said and done coming back around. And so possibly the two of you may be on um, a mirrored journey on, you know, a similar journey where, you know, in order for you two to really be able to come together and to have the kind of relationship that both of you are wanting, both of you are needing to complete this task in your lives of, um, Figuring out who you are and why you're here. Figuring out how to create happiness first within yourself and then, you know, um, create happiness within yourself, create love within yourself, and then um, sharing that between each other. But it's basically like not needing the other person to show up in any particular way in order for you to be happy. That's not saying that, um, you know, when you're in relationships that people don't need to show up for you. But this is saying that you're not needing someone to do anything particular in order for you to be and stay happy because happy is just what you are. Um, you know, and so what you'll end up doing is attracting people into your life who will um, mirror that back to you, which will also be this person. Like the two of you are going to be mirroring to each other um, what that other person is holding in their heart. And if that person is holding in their heart strength, loyalty, self-confident, self-love, and all that stuff, that's exactly what, how they're going to be showing up to you and how you're going to be showing up to them, okay? Uh, let's see what shadow work might need to be done um, for this union, reunion to um, come to pass if that is something you're wanting, Pile One. We've got blame and accountability. So basically taking responsibility for your part and how things played out in um, this connection. Let's get four more for pile one, please. Pile one shadow work. What work does pile one have to do if they want a possible reunion with their person? Withdrawal, grief, disconnected. And so you have to see the relationship as a separate entity, right? And you really don't want things as they were. You want them to be better. And so you have to grieve the loss of the relationship as you know it and just let it go for now and continue on your journey, healing, restoring, repairing yourself, getting over the past, um, learning how to love yourself, things of that nature, and withdraw your energy from this connection with this person because that connection is no longer, it's not the same. It's not the same connection that... Um, you became attached to. So you have to go ahead and allow yourself to pull your energy back and focus your energy on yourself and focus your energy on your own healing, your own journey, your own path here during this lifetime. Here we've got whirl, whirlpool cycles. So I really, this is letting me know the two of you on it are on a very similar journey. Uh, we also have facade and trust issues. So there may have been some things happening between the two of you that caused trust issues on your part that if the two of you are going to come back together, 
Um, you're going to have to learn how to leave those things in the past and, and treat this reconnection, this reconciliation as a completely new relationship with a whole new different person and um, allow those things to stay in the past and then move forward from there. And basically a facade also is like dropping the mask. And that's part of like learning who you are and why you're here is learn uh, is dropping the um, the mask of the I, what did I call it again? <laughs> it's the ego, but it's the distorted ego. Um, your false identity, okay? Uh, the false identity is what you believe you who you believe you are, what you believe you're capable of, but that identity is based out of fear, okay? Let's get one more for pile one, please. What shadow work, what things uh, can pile one work on uh, to help increase the chances of, and here we got pyrite fools gold. And so you really have to like, basically all that glitters um, is not, isn't gold. Okay. So just because it looks good, it doesn't mean that it is good. It doesn't mean that it is authentic. Okay. Um, things are getting, you know, people are getting really good at faking, um, you know, and at, Oh, what's that pirating is coming up like pirating stuff but um faking uh knockoffs okay there you go knockoff the word is a knockoff so um people are really good at presenting a knockoff of what you really want okay so you have to be really and this is for yourself as well a lot of the times because we operate under this false identity we're trying to wear this mask of what we believe um, others want to see or we're wearing this mask of you know what we believe um, will make us feel worthy to the outside world and you really have to learn how to get very well acquainted with your true authentic self and and be okay in that part of yourself okay and to be very careful about knockoffs um, presenting I don't know why false idols is want to come up like not letting a person um, become your God, basically. And we let people become our God when we require their presence in our life for us to feel worthy, for us to feel okay, for us to feel safe and secure. Um, and so it's really just kind of, you know, your higher self letting you know, just be very careful about making someone your false idol, okay? All right, let's see, we'll move on. And now we're gonna get some actual some actual messages from your your person okay messages from them to you all right pile one's person messages please what pile what messages do pile one's person have for them let's get five cards oh it says I am coming trust so this is pointing to a reconciliation but there is going to be some time okay uh, and it may be a significant amount of time we're talking months possibly years so you need to uh, basically move on like this card over here says this is for you as well where it's talking about girl talk I'm having fun with friends moving on enjoying the single life living in the moment and having fun um, while you're working on trying to find your your place in this world okay oh Oh, look, I have so much desire for you. So underneath, like, underneath their, their external focus, I guess it's internal too, um, there's always going to be this, this connection that they feel with you, even when they are not focused on it seemingly at all, okay? Uh, pile one's person, what messages does pile one's person have for them? Let's get three more cards. Call one's person. Okay, so it says yes. <laughs> I'm sorry. So they, they do want to apologize about something. One more card for Paul one, please. Like, yes, there is going to be a reconciliation between the two of you. Uh, let's get one more card. But you're going to have to treat them as a whole entirely different person. And you're going to be some, somebody completely different too. So the two of you cannot um, 
cannot have the same relationship that you had before the separation because the two of you are going to be entirely different people. So you've got two energies that have been completely transformed and transmuted coming back together. And so that joint energy, that relationship is not going to be anything like it was the first time around. Okay. So if the relationship was okay, if it was fairly good, um, it's going to be awesome this time around. Now, if the relationship was crappy, there was a lot of miscommunication, a lot of um, uh, misdirection. Some of you may have even had to deal with um, some sneakiness. I don't think a lot of you really had to deal with cheating too much. That may be true for some of you, like cheating and betrayal and things like that. I really feel like this was just like the timing was off between the two of you. The timing was just off. And so, you know, and no matter how hard you or the other person tried to make it work, it just, it's not going to work because right now where both of you are at the paths in your life for this lifetime, um, you weren't meant to grow in that like you wouldn't have been able to achieve what you're needing to achieve as far as internal transformation um, with your energy and your focus and your drive directed on somebody outside of you. Okay, let's get one more card for pile one. They are waiting for you. Okay, so... You do have their heart. Like even if they are going to maybe date around, and for some of you, this person may not. This person may be like, no, I'm not gonna see anybody. I'm not even going to date. I'm not going out on dates or anything like that because like they're, they are completely committed and focused to um, this path of self-discovery. Um, and for the, the rest of you where, you know, the two of you are kind of going and enjoying your single life, the two of you may even get into some somewhat long, not long term, but like a short term romance or a dalliance with someone. But like, they're, like there's not going to be a huge long term commitment with somebody. It's just not in uh, the stars is what's coming up because the two of you on some, some level are really meant to be each other's person. Like through like marriage wise, if you're not like wanting marriage, then just that long term commitment where the two of you are like, you know, the two of you are each other's person. OK, so that is coming through strongly. Uh, this person for right now, though, is just not wanting uh, like their, their focus and their aim is on themselves, healing themselves, figuring out who, who they are, you know, letting go of the past if there's a past past for them to let go of uh, oh this says I don't want to know this may be a mutual thing like if the two of you are dating or you know seeing somebody or something like that it's like they don't want to know about it I still feel the pain let's get a uh, one more card Ooh. oh and it says they do miss seeing you <clears throat> So every now and again, um, and maybe that's partly why they're kind of like throwing themselves into this new path because they do, when they stop long enough, they actually do feel um, the pain of your absence. And they're not wanting to get lost in that. They're really just wanting to focus on healing. And I'm not saying healing from like the connection or the relationship, but just healing overall. Healing past life karma, healing present life karma, healing uh, negative mindsets, healing um, anything that is keeping them from being able to live the life that they want to live here during this lifetime. And this says, I want you. Mm -hmm. Very direct messages coming through from the to you, Pile 1. Um, we got two more cards for Pile 1, please. If, this, if your person had um, a difficult childhood, if they've had a really difficult... Um, a really difficult um, maybe a difficult marriage if they've been married before like they're really wanting to 
release and let go of, of any emotional baggage um, because they're tired of carrying it. And they realize that they're carrying that baggage um, into every single area of their life, including you know the connection that they had with you. And it was affecting both of you. But they do want to be with you, but they want to be a whole person when they're with you. But they are really trying to keep themselves um, disciplined because they realize that they cannot have the same, like the connection that the two of you had together before just wasn't working. Like there was some kind of a breakdown and they know that there's no way that the two of you can be together and, and keep repeating the same patterns. They do want a different a true love relationship with you, but they they realize that in order for that to happen um, They have to let go of their baggage. They have some healing to do they need to figure out who they are and why they're here and they need to uh, You know work on becoming a whole person in themselves and learning how to find happiness within themselves Instead of you know needing someone else outside of them um, to give it to them. Yep, it says I'm not available and it says, I couldn't let you get close to me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it was just, the timing was off, pile one. That really is all that it was. The, the timing was just off, um, probably for both of you. Um, it seems or it feels here like your energies are very similar. Your paths are very similar. And so the two of you really need, like, like the two of you could not have been able to um, be in this connection in a functioning connection, no matter how dysfunctional it was, and still heal and let go of things at the same time. That's just not the way, you know, it happens. And so, you know, I don't know if they left or if you left or if it was a mutual split, but they are choosing at this time to not even focus on this connection. They're focusing on their connection with their selves first and foremost, and they really don't have any desire to be with anybody else. Um, not to say that they're they I don't know if they're on dating apps or anything like that but what I am what I can say is that they're not going to get themselves into any kind of a long-term relationship um, that's not even on their radar right now they're not looking for that they're looking for a long-term relationship with themselves <laughs> all right uh, let's see let's get one final message let's see let's get a message from your higher self Pile one, uh, uh, what pi what message does Pile One's higher self have for them concerning um, life in general right now? What message do they need, Pile One? What message do they need to hear for Pile One? Come on, <laughs> getting to, okay. Oh, past lives. Uh, reconnect with your past and so this is indicative that the two of you may have had a past life together uh, the message here it says reconnect with your past is kind of like that's guiding you towards where you need to start as far as your healing goes okay and past life could go all into you know your childhood um, all the way up into you know uh, the past with this person okay your person so um, those are your messages, Pile One. Thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, if you found any kind of value in this message, do me a favor and smash that like button. Uh, comment, share, subscribe if you feel led to do so. And I look forward to reading again for you very soon. Thanks, Pile One. Pile Two. If you chose the Blue Appetite Sphere, this is going to be your reading. So let's get right into it. We're going to be tapping into the energy um, of this connection between you and your person, okay? And just kind of get a feel for where it's at right now. Uh, here we have the Dragonfly. So be lighthearted, finding out things coming to light, adapt, change, and heal, okay? Got transformation coming through. And then we got the Dragon's Lair. All right, so... There's a couple of different ways this reading can go. So we're just gonna pull some more cards to kind of get an idea of, um, get some more information or some more clues as to the energy of this connection. Pile 
too. The energy of this connection. Pile two, the energy of this connection with pile two's person. Show me the energy of this connection for pile two. All right, got one card jumping out. We have the page of swords. All right, so there is an indication of some being on the defense here. Pile two's person. Like the sword is drawn. There is kind of like a wall or a guard up. Pile two's person. That's too many, but we will take this one that flipped out. Uh, all right, we got Emperor energy coming through. Very, very divine masculine. Pile two's person, this connection. We got the Nine of Cups. We got the moon, so there may be some selfishness coming from this person. Let's get one more card, please, for Pile Two's Pile Two's um, connection with their person. I am getting some iffy vibes about this connection, not necessarily about this person, but. Um, I almost feel like you're needing um, to be protected, not because like this person isn't safe for you, but there's just some things that are being, that I feel aren't being revealed to you. I don't know if they're outright lies, if they're being uh, like, you know, things that are being omitted. Let's get one more card, please. Or, you know, holding stuff back that could be it also, too. Maybe not things that are being hold, held, um, not necessarily things that are being hidden, but things are being held or like withheld. So, with this dragonfly here talking about information coming to light and adapting and changing, um, I feel like this person is definitely withholding something from you. So, this could be information, it could just, they, they're withholding their, you know, their energy, they're withholding. You know, with the Nine of Cups is usually like the wish fulfillment card, but in this particular reading, it has more of the feeling like this person is kind of hoarding like something. They're being very selfish. They're kind of on, kind of almost being greedy. Um, I don't know if that's with their time, with their energy, all of the above. And just very... Almost, okay, so there's like a divine masculine energy here, but right by the page of swords is kind of like um, the wounded masculine. This person has a lot of heart and uh, heart healing to do. They're predominantly ego right now, which is not healthy at all, especially if it's um, distorted ego. Ego in and of itself isn't bad. I mean, we need ego. Ego is what keeps us from like, you know, burning, you know, touching things that are hot, you know, jumping out in front of cars. I mean, ego is there to to, to um, help us live our lives safely here in this 3D realm. Um, but a distorted ego is based completely out of fear. So a healthy ego is based out of, you know, trust, love faith in the universe faith and well-being and things of that nature and this person really uh, very much feels like they are heavy on the distorted ego and so like with the dragon layer here there is kind of a feeling like you're not really safe like your heart isn't safe or you may not be like physically safe with this person i'm not sure you know this is a general reading so you can take it how it resonates but there is a part or several parts of yourself that isn't there that at this point in time isn't really safe in this connection be it your heart isn't safe in this connection maybe your 
uh, mental health isn't safe, emotional health, spiritual health, things of that nature. Um, let's look at some more cards. Let's look at... Um, no, that's not what I was wanting to look at. Hmm. Let's look at the overall... What, can, what you can expect from this connection at this time. Getting to know each other as you reveal your innermost selves to each other, your bonds deepen. Interesting. That's kind of a weird paradox of, um, of messages here. So at this point in time, your person... Um, They're just completely focused on themselves. I mean, we are going to progress more in the reading to get direct messages from them to you. But as far as like this connection is concerned, it's not, it's not on the forefront of their mind. I'm not saying that they never think about it. In fact, it may very well be that anytime thoughts of you or thoughts of this connection come up, this person automatically tries to like shut it down. Yeah. They're not, they're really, they are, they're really, are not really trying to think or feel too much about this connection. Because honestly, they don't, with the distorted ego, you know, basically driving their bus, they don't know how to process, you know, what happened in the connection or, you know, um, maybe the connection was split because... You know, there were, you had expectations and standards of them that they weren't able to live up to. And, you know, they might, they might very well be disappointed in themselves or just disappointed in how things turned out. Or it could just be that they completely shut you out and so that they don't have to think about those things because they don't know, they don't know how to face it with a distorted ego. Um, until you awaken out of that, there really is no way to tap in. Um, to, to anything. There's no way to tap into your innermost being. There's no way to tap into your heart, especially when the this distorted ego is, is shutting you off um, from your heart space. I'm going to put this kind of over here because I feel like this is a message that is wanting to develop. And so we'll just keep pulling cards and then I know that um, this getting to know each other bit will make itself, uh, will explain itself in a little bit. Okay, here we've got Galactic Mushroom, the Divine Matrix. Okay, so this is kind of like, this whole, like this is part of the plan, is what I'm hearing. Like this connection, what happened in this connection was part of some, part of the plan. But it feels more like possibly what the two of you had decided upon prior to incarnating here. This feels like a divine arrangement, like a soul contract between the two of you. We're going to pull some more cards. Patience is popping up. So, I mean, there may possibly be a reconciliation later on down the line. But this person really, truly needs to kind of wake up out of their sleep. They need to wake up out of um, their distorted ego. Um, like, their distorted ego is a, is a full-fledged mask keeping them like they, who they think they are and what they think they're capable of is completely covering up. Um, who they really are inside. Hmm. Let's see what's going on with them beneath the, beneath the surface. Let's get a few cards. Pile two's person. What is going on with pile two's person beneath the surface? Your person is actually going through some shit right now. Puppet manipulate. Hmm. 
They may be the kind of person to hide it very well. Here we've got camouflage and perception. Let's get um, let's get four more cards. Let's really figure out what is going on with this person. Here we've got sabotage and self defeat. We got hot and cold and consistent. I can see that for them. Let's get two more cards. Uh, greener grass worth and subway toll. All right, so they are really confused about who they are, what they're capable of, what they want. They are very confused about what they want. There's a lot of subconscious belief structures and triggers that are happening. So with this constant push and pull, you may have felt, you may feel with this person. Um, that is because like, you know, when they are pulling you, like pulling you towards them, they truly are feeling that way. And this is kind of the dynamic between people who are, um, especially if they are in kind of like an avoidant attachment system, if that's kind of where they're coming from. I truly do believe that when they are in the pull phase, um, when they are activated, um, when their attachment system is activated, I do feel that they, they are genuine. They genuinely mean what they say. Like, and they truly believe that like, if they're telling you they want, they want a future, they want this and they want that. Um, I truly believe that they actually, they do believe that. And then, uh, you know, a certain point hits and then all of a sudden they deactivate and that's when they start to run, okay? And this is a constant push and pull that's it's just part of it's part of the self-sabotage the self-defeat um and i really do feel like they are being manipulated by this corrupt ego they really need to wake up out of that if the two of you are ever going to have a shot at having a healthy solid and steady relationship together or a connection um, whether you want it long term or not or maybe the two of you have kids together uh, whatever may be like the dynamics of the connection, um, this person's ego is it right now. It, it's it's driving their bus. It's driving their life, and it's very difficult when you are operating within a distorted ego to think any differently. You have to literally have some kind of a spiritual awakening, um, because you can't awaken out of the mind through the mind you can only do that through um you know through your heart space through your spirit through your soul things of that nature and that's really what's needing to happen for this person they're trying to think their way um into a different way of living but you can't do that they can't do that you can't you know i mean your thinking comes from your distorted ego and so you can't um transform something using you know what's corrupted anyway all right let's get some actual message from your person messages from your person to you pile two's uh, person let's get some messages from them what messages does pile two person have for them uh, they're saying that they need more balance they need an awakening but you know that's that's their path that they're on. Uh, more messages from Pile Two's person, please. I am coming. Trust. Reach out. Please give me time. I've never felt this way before. I am ready. Okay, so, um, and these messages are pretty congruent. So I really do feel like what I mean by that is sometimes these messages come and they're kind of all over the place. You'll have one card that says I'm ready and then the next one will say, you know, they need more time, which that would be very indicative of somebody that has an avoidant attachment. You know, they're, they're very kind of wishy-washy on one side or the other, but all of these messages are very congruent. So this person actually does, um, they know what they want with you. They know who you are to them. You are someone who is very important to them. Um, they would like a whole brand new start with you. 
and they're actually for whatever reason they're waiting for you to reach out I mean maybe you've kind of told them not to reach out to you not to call you or talk to you or whatever and so they're kind of waiting for you to give them the green light and and that in, in that sense it's like you reaching out to them you initiating contact especially if you've been in a phase of no contact with this person but just know um, even if they do tell you that they are ready there's still some healing to do because they're still going to be in that push-pull dynamic okay um, so if you choose to initiate contact with this person again or you know try to restart the relationship they are not actually ready like the healing that they need to do is not happening yet okay um, I'm not seeing Indian I'm not seeing any indication that um, the healing that they need to do like the spiritual awakening that is going to be required and able for an able <laughs> the spiritual awakening that is required for them to break that you know break through that distorted ego um, there's no indication of if and when that is going to happen okay but that is going that does need to happen in order for the two of you to be able to have a solid steady healthy um, connection uh, let's get some more messages from your person oh my gosh and these just wanted to fall all over the place All right, what messages do they have for you, Pile? Two. Okay, here it says, you were the best thing in my life. We will be together again. I will wait for a sign from you. Yep, see, they're kind of waiting to see for the green light. And it says, I regret lying to you. So there, you know, for many of you, there must have been like you didn't feel safe, like you didn't feel like you could trust them. Um, maybe you felt like your heart wasn't really safe with them. They are feeling regretful for the way things turned out and it says we don't share the same values. Let's get a couple more cards for pile two. Two messages from their person. And that may be pointing to actual core values. Um, and it just could be something like, you know, you value steady, um, constant communication. Um, maybe they need more space than that. Things like that. I mean, uh, whatever resonates with you, it could be both. It could be a combination of both. And the two of you could have entirely different um, ways of seeing things, of perceiving things. Um, you know, think about political structures, religious structure, structures, um, and your core values could, could be completely different. And if that's the case, then it's no, it's no um, surprise that things didn't work out. But at the same time, like I said, it could just be the fact that you know you like to stay in constant communication you don't like to go a day without hearing from them in some way shape or form and they just they have no problem going you know a day or two without texting or contacting you or connecting it says I admire you and this says I don't know what you want and I feel like that's more on their side like <laughs> Um, because I feel like you haven't had a, you haven't had a problem in communicating with them what you want. And you may actually be in a space right now after everything is said and done where you may not know if you want this person in your life like that right now. And they're not really quite sure. This could be why, like they're, they're not really quite sure if you're wanting them to reach out to you or not. And they're not really quite sure if you're wanting to reestablish a connection with them or not. And so they're kind of hanging back. But at the same time, it's like you may very well be in this place where you don't know what you want pile to. You may be like, you know, you love this person or you have feelings for this person or you care for this person. But you're seeing that um, the way things exist now, there, there can never be a, um, a comfortable, healthy whole you know connection with this person there's always going to be some form of toxicity involved um, because of this person being unable to um, 
see anything beyond their false identity, beyond, beyond their um, distorted egoic mask. Like that identity is it's completely covering them. They, they identify themselves as that mask. They're not realizing that they're not their thoughts, they're not their emotions, or not even their body. But that's how they identify themselves. And so they identify other people like that too. So if this person is really like connecting their self-worth with like the, the work that they do, the money that they make, um, that's how they're connecting other people's self-worth too. And they may, that may have been an issue between the two of you. Um, there may have been some kind of a misaligned dynamic between, you know, those kinds of belief structures. All right, let's get a final message for Pile 2. Um, what message does Pile 2's higher self have for them regarding this connection? Nourishment. Okay, it says feed your soul, explore what makes you feel inspired. And so basically if this connection has been making you feel drained... If this connection has been like causing you to not feel very good about yourself, um, not very good, very good about your life, it's like to pull your energy off of anything that is causing you to feel that way about yourself and your life and to pour it back into yourself and your life and then start doing things that are nourishing for you, nourishing for your body, nourishing for your soul, your mind, and your heart. And I'm also hearing to really nourish your inner child as well like reparenting yourself, you know, you may not feel like, um, you know, like eating nutritious food or drinking, you know, um, the kind of water, you know, the amount of water that you need to drink. But think about, you know, if you have kids or if you have pets, there may be days where you don't feel <laughs> like feeding your, your kids or your pets, but you do it anyway. You know, there may be days where you don't feel like bathing your kids or bathing you, your pets or taking your kids out to play or your pets out to play, but you do it anyway because you value, you know, you value them and you know that they deserve it. And so you push through how you feel and you basically parent anyway, despite what you're feeling. And then so what you really need to do, pile two, is do this for yourself you know, parent yourself regardless of how you're feeling. You know, if, even if you don't feel like eating nutritiously, do it anyway. Even if you don't feel like, you know, getting some exercise, do it, do it anyway because, you know, you, you value yourself. You know that you deserve um, the rewards of doing those things, okay? Um, but really the self-nourishment is really taking your focus inside and soothing yourself, like making yourself realize that you are worthy, you are special, you are important, um, and you have every reason to be confident in yourself and in your abilities, okay? All right, Pile 2, those were your messages. I hope that you enjoyed them. If you did, please do me a favor and smash that like button. Uh, comment, share, subscribe if you feel led to do so. Um, I honor the time that you spend here with me. I know time is very precious and limited, and um, I am so looking forward to reading again for you very soon. Thanks, you guys. Bye. Hi, Pile 3. If you chose the rainbow fluorite point or generator, this is going to be your reading. And we are going to be looking at uh, messages from your person. All right. So let's see. Let's look at the energy that is connecting, you know, uh, what the connecting energy is like. And here we got photograph, looking at your photos, missing you, nostalgia, uh, wanting to make new memories. And then we also have rock bottom. Okay. Um, I am picking up that there is, of course, it's, you know, that as the card says that they're missing you. <sighs> With rock bottom being here, um, like this, re like this connection, like this person realizes that, you know, this connection may be on its last leg. Like they have, um, they've reached, the, like you've reached the limit with them. They've used up all the chances they've had with you. Now let's get some more information. I am detecting. Um, I am detecting some remorse. Some of you, this person may actually have like a real, like an, um, an a legitimate addiction to something. 
and that addiction somehow got in the way. And addiction, of course, isn't just drugs or alcohol. It can be, um, you know, sex, work, uh, sex, <laughs> and then work. You know, not sex work, but sex and then work. <laughs> um, you know, anything really that they use to distract themselves or coping mechanisms. Um, for some of you, that may be true. Like, that could have been kind of like their breaking point. Maybe they had, um, you know, they had a wandering eye or they, they just, you know, what, what, as we would say, they couldn't keep it in their pants or for some of you, okay? Um, it could have just been, you know, um, like they just kept letting you down over and over, disappointing, disappointing you over and over. It doesn't have to be anything as um, extreme as, you know, like an addiction or, you know, consistent cheating or infidelity. It could just be that, you know, um, they stood you up for dates or just they didn't call you when they said they were going to call you, things, things like that. But there is kind of like, like this rock bottom feeling here is like this relationship, this connection is on its last leg and they know that they've used up their chances with you. Here we've got the Ace of Swords. So... There is going to be like a renewed sense of, of communication. Like, so if the two of you have been, if they've been in no contact or they've been like you're experiencing radio silence with this person, like they're going to be reaching out again very soon. All right. Um, they are going to be re-establishing contact. And they're going to be reaching out. Let's get a few more cards for pile three's person. Pile three is person. What are they thinking and feeling about this connection or this per, or pile three? Pile three is person. We got the page of wands in reverse. We got the eight of wands. Then we have the queen of. There is a lot of wand and uh, a sword energy here. And then we also have the high priestess in reverse. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, there is a lot of blocked energy. I'm hearing for a lot of you, this person just did not, they did not respect your boundaries. They didn't respect your wishes. They, they didn't really seem to care about your needs. Like you would tell them what you needed and what you wanted and then maybe they would agree, but then they never really followed through. Um, Yeah, I'm not picking up very healthy vibes from this person. Like, this person may have done a number. Your person may have done a number on, um, like, your mental health, your emotional health. Like, they seem they, like they could be very passionate when they want it to be. But I feel like that, that energy was more, you know, out of what they wanted. And sometimes if it would align with what you wanted, then that's when the two of you seem to really get along. But for the most part, it's almost like they just wanted to do their own thing and expected you to either, you know, come along for the ride or just, you know, like your needs didn't really matter. The wall obstacles. And that may have been what, like, that may be what you felt like you were constantly encountering with them was a wall, a brick wall. Let's get more information about Pile Three's person. This connection with Pile Three's person. This person may be very confused about what they're about what they want. Like they think they need something, but then once they get it, all of a sudden it's like no, they need something completely different. Like you've done what you can. Like you know, you've been very good about communicating, about trying to meet them halfway, and then maybe they tell you what they want, and then you provide what they want. And then all of a sudden it moves. Like all of a sudden 
Oh, well, no, that doesn't really matter, but this thing over here matters. Like, they can never really be satisfied. But they really were not showing up for you in the way that you wanted them to, in the way that you deserved pile three. And here we've got choices. Yeah. They were really confused about what they wanted. And so for those of you whose person had kind of like a wandering eye, that was a lot of the problem. They just felt like they had too many choices. They didn't know. Um, they had a major fear of missing out. Major fear of missing out. Um, granted, like if they ever did step out on you, it didn't take them long to realize that <laughs> they weren't missing out on anything and so they would return to you or, you know, apologize to you or try to suck you back in. But, like, I feel like you've had it. You're done with that. You're over that. Let's get the outcome for it. What can Pile 3 expect from this person out of this connection? Forgiving and learning as you release and heal the past, you experience more love in your present moments. And so, yeah, I feel like you're able to put stuff into perspective. I think you understand and realize that what happened between the two of you and their failure to show up for you was, was on them and not you. Like, it's not that you weren't worthy of receiving their best. It's that they, they didn't have, like... What you thought their best was, they wasn't actually their best. They they literally couldn't show up for you the way that you wanted them to. It's not that they could, but they just didn't because of, you know, you didn't deserve it. Even if they're telling you that pile through, that's not that's not the issue at all. And I believe that you're seeing that. You're kind of seeing like the um the incongruence between what they were saying and what they were doing. And you may even have kind of like an intuitive insight into you know, the, their inner working and realizing like, oh, okay, it wasn't me. It's been them this whole time. This is like a pattern. This is an issue for them that is completely separate from me. You know, like this pattern was there before you. It was there while they were with you. And it's there now that they're not with you. It's going to continue with them until they, you know, either get some kind of a spiritual awakening or they do the necessary healing but in order for them to do the healing they have to realize that there's a problem in the first place and that might be where this rock bottom situation is taking them and that may be the whole point of this rock bottom is to kind of wake them up because they're just going to keep continuing down the same path repeating the same patterns and not being able to truly find what they're wanting and what they're wanting is a sense of peace a sense of wholeness a sense of continuity they just don't know how to get it and they keep looking outside of themselves for it um yeah but this whole rock bottom thing it's actually for the best as far as they're concerned that's the only way they're going to wake up all right let's see we got the push and pull dynamic Big surprise that that came out. Not. All right, let's get a few more cards for pile three. Let's get four more cards for pile three, please. All right, we got uncertainty. Exit strategy avoidance. I am picking up on the whole avoidant attachment thing with this person. And then we've got overwhelm and letting go. And then a comfort zone and settle. Mm hmm. Yeah. For those of you that don't know what an, what attachment systems are in the dynamics of like romantic relationships, and it can even be it's just in romantic uh, in relationships in general. But for the mo but for the most part, um, attachment issues uh, show up within the confines of romantic relationships. Okay, and so if you don't know what an what an avoided attachment is, or what an anxious attachment is, I would look into it. 
uh, it's going to really put things into perspective for you. You should look up a book, and I'll put a link underneath your timestamp, Pile 3. Um, it's called um, Attachment, and I can't even remember the name of the author, but I will put a link to it in underneath Pile 3. Um, if your person is constantly push and pull, um, you know, like the two of you will are constantly making up and then breaking up, and what's going on is um, you're in this dynamic where um, they're either pulling you in for a period and then they're pushing you away. Um, that's very much the dynamic of um, it's an attachment system issue, okay, between the two of you. And if they're avoidant, you are probably anxious, okay? Um, but I would definitely look into the dynamics of attachment system issues because it's going to help you put this whole thing back into perspective. And I feel like you might possibly already be down that path, okay? Um, yeah, so this person just has a habit of getting close and then backing off. Getting close and then backing off. Um, it's really kind of weird because while a part of them does value, you know, a sense of comfort and safety and intimacy, um, they get scared of intimacy. Like, when they get into the intimacy and all of a sudden it's like, oh, this is... It's too predictable. That's where the drama comes in. And so, you know, this part of them kind of comes in where they're, you know, their ego, their distorted ego really starts to lie to them. Like, you know, they, like I said, they, it feels like they have a fear of missing out. And so the, you know, and that's kind of like the signal of the, the triggering of this attachment system. It's their subconscious's way of, protecting them and so they'll get really comfortable in this you know intimate relationship with you or this relationship and then all of a sudden it's like oh whoa you know their subconscious triggers take over trying to save trying to keep them safe and um, starts to bring up old familiar thought patterns like you know what if I'm missing out on something um, you know what if this is all there is you know it's a it's a for avoidance it's very much a fear of missing out but really, it's indicative of a, a, a very big fear of intimacy, okay? A loss of their freedom and autonomy. All right, let's see. Let's get some actual messages from them to you. All right, what messages does Pile Three's person have for them? Pile Three's person. Here we've got... Let me hold you, Pile Three's person. Their attachment system right now is activated, so they're they are missing you. They're wanting to reconnect with you again. They're wanting, but just know that they are starting the cycle. Like if this is not gonna end until they do the healing, and it can take years to do that kind of healing, but they are missing you right now. I sometimes wonder if you care and actually what's what comes out is is I sometimes wonder if you still care that's what's wanting to be said I feel the same way you are wrong I'm a very jealous person so they're definitely kind of having issues with the thought of you completely moving on let's see give me a second um, And this may be like where it says that you are wrong. This may be kind of like what they're constantly saying, like especially if you have some insight into their inner workings and you're telling them things like, you know, you, you really don't want a relationship. You don't want this. You don't want that. You know, they may tell you that you are wrong, but, you know, and consciously they believe that because in that moment they're missing you and they want to be with you and they want to be in your presence and, you know, they're craving that intimacy in that moment um, but you are seeing the inner workings you understand that on a subconscious level on a, on a very deep subconscious level um, they fear close intimacy 
Um, and so it, you're not wrong in a sense of, you know, what you believe about this connection to be true. Um, this is your person telling you that you are wrong about your insight, but I can tell you that you're not. You're pretty, you're, you're dead on, okay? Um, I do feel like on a very deep level, they, they very much do care for you, may even love you. Um, on some, it's so weird with avoidance though. It's like they can, there are times when they see a future with you and then when things get too close, too intimate, then all of a sudden it freaks the crap out of them and it's like, no, they can't. They can't see the, the rest of their life like that. You know, it's, it, it can be very jarring. It can be very deflating if you don't know the inner workings of someone like this. That's why it's very important to read, th read books like Attached because it depersonalizes their treatment of you. It depersonalizes them detaching from you and detaching their relationship or leaving their relationship. It, it, it shows you that their actions towards you have nothing to do with you, okay? Um, I believe a lot of you, though, are already seeing that. You've already come to that conclusion. So I'm just providing you with some, with some confirmation, um, with some re more resolve. All right, here we have, I can't get enough of you. Actually, we'll have to put that right there. We also have, do I still have a chance? Let's get one more for pile three from this deck. I have trouble with intimacy. Duh, <laughs> what have I been telling you? Yes, yeah, so this person is um, an avoidant attachment. They have an avoidant attachment system. So they, you know, they go from activating their attachment system and that's when they're wanting to be with you, they're wooing you, they're pursuing you, they're chasing you, they're telling you everything you wanna hear. And then when they get what they want and they're experiencing that close intimacy with you, that's when they get scared and I mean, when I say they get scared, this isn't necessarily a conscious thing that's going on, okay? It's a subconscious trigger. It's below um, the awareness of their conscious mind. They don't know that it's happening, okay? So, um, you know, but they get too close and then all of a sudden, um, you know, they deactivate and that's when they push you away. That's when they stop calling as often as they were. Um, they stop showing up for you the way that they have been. And this says, so many things remind me of you. It's time for me to heal now. Yes, amen to that. They definitely need to heal. Um, let's get one more card for pile three. Messages to pile three from their person. It says, I remember every detail about that day. Um, and this could be literal, like there could be like maybe the last ending the two of you had, or this could be something like, you know, um, that day could point to something that they find like a memory that they have very fond of you. Um, but you are very vividly in their mind. Like right now I can tell you their attachment system is activated. They are in that cycle of missing you, wanting to, to wanting to reconnect with you. Um, being able to see a future with you again, um, all of those things. But unfortunately, they need to heal. Um, they have to be aware of what's going on beneath the surface when they are reacting this way. Otherwise, they're really going to truly believe that, you know, oh, all of a sudden that they don't, um, they don't feel the way about you that they thought. And this, like, they, that's not truly how, they're, how they feel. That is their subconscious, um, that's them being deactivated. That's their subconscious trying to uh, protect them, erroneously so, but trying to protect them. Uh, and until they see what's going on beneath the surface, until they see their inner workings, um, this cycle with them is going to continue. Oh, and I just now realized you got the red, like the stop sign, and then you got the green light. And this is kind of like the whole, <laughs> that summarizes the dynamics of your guys' um, connection. It's like, you know, all of us, it's like they put the brakes on and then all of a sudden, oh, you finally got the green light. And then they put the brakes on and then you finally got the green light. That's like how it constantly is. It's that constant push and pull. You know, it's like the red light, green light, red light, green light. 
uh, and I'm not laughing. Uh, you guys, I have been in several, you know, dynamics like this. It's not fun. Uh, it's very draining. It can cause you to question your own self-worth and um, until you, you know, are able to see the inner workings on both sides, it's very difficult to be in a relationship like this and have any kind of peace of mind, any kind of peace of heart. Um, even when you're healed, even when you are healed, being in a, in a connection with this dynamic is very draining and very taxing, even when you're healed, because you still have your needs. And when your needs aren't being met, you know, that's no good, because you know you deserve for your needs to be met. All right, I got one more message for you guys, and this is going to be um, your higher self um, speaking directly to you. And it says, inner child, rediscover the simple pleasures of life. Take the time to reconnect to your youth. So basically, that's like, focus on you. Do you. Um, you know, think about children and, and think about how they show up in the world. I mean, inner children, inner, yeah, in, like children don't, they fear very little. They have this amazement and this wonderment. It's like every single day is like they're discovering something new. Um, and it doesn't matter how many times they see a flower. They're always so happy to see flowers. And it doesn't matter how often, you know, they see um, a bug it's just like they're so excited about seeing bugs it's just like everything to them is exciting everything to them is new even though they've seen it a thousand times uh, they laugh at this at the stupidest stuff and just that makes it just funny funnier than shit and you know they love to paint they love to draw they just they love experiencing life through the senses of their bodies right so you know they love to finger paint and play in the mud and you know, it's just experiencing life through their senses, not through their minds. And I think that's why a lot of us get into trouble is because we forget that we're not experiencing life through our minds. That's not how we actually experience life. We experience life through the senses of our bodies. Our minds cause a lot of problems, especially if you're dealing with distortions of the ego. Um, and you're able to heal and really allow breakthrough to happen when you connect with your inner self, your higher self, your intuition, your true self. And you can do that through um, experiencing life through the senses of your body. You know, and the easiest way to to figure out ways to do that is just think about what how kids are, how children are, how they play, how they create. They're all, you know, always imagining stuff. It's just, it's so beautiful. All right, you guys, that those were your messages. I really hope that you enjoy the time you spent here with me. I honor the time that you spent here with me. Um, and do me a favor, if you found any value in these messages, do me a favor and smash that like button, comment, share, subscribe if you feel led to do so. And I look forward to reading again for you very soon. Thanks, Pile 3. Hello, Pile 4. If you chose the Septarian Sphere, this is going to be your reading, and I love how this, it almost seems like a keyhole. It could also be like an eye, like the pupil of an eye. But doesn't a septarian kind of look like a dragon, you know, dragon or a snake pattern or an egg or something like that? Anyway, neither here nor there. <laughs> this is your reading. We're going to be looking, um, channeling some messages from your person, okay? So let's kind of get a feeling um, as far as the energy and the direction of where this connection is and where it's going. So here we've got karmic relationship, uh, fleeting triggers, turmoil, resentment, lessons, letting go and loving you. And here we have home. Mm. So we kind of have, there's some sort of conflicting energy here. So what I'm going to do is just pull some more cards to get more of a, um, more information, a more feeling. So what's coming up is that, okay, so this, this relationship may have been, or this connection may have been very, a very difficult and challenging one for you. Um, I do feel like mm, it's not really, most of you, it feels like most of you are in some kind of disconnection or separation from this person. And right now, it's like you went back home. Whether it's like you actually left um, the space that you're sharing with this person, 
or you know you, you're retreating back into yourself you're learning how to reparent yourself and make yourself your own home but you're going to a place of comfort you're trying to like reparent and comfort yourself okay that's what's coming through um let's get some more information what are pile threes or pile fours person what's their uh thoughts and feelings towards pile four in their in this connection Pile four's person. What are they thinking and feeling about pile four? Oh, we got the ten of swords. Pile four's person. What are they thinking and feeling about this connection? They may have a feeling of feeling pinned down. For some of you whose person kind of had you in that dynamic, that push and pull dynamic, where um, they were either chasing you and then once they caught you, they started pulling away. As I pull more cards, I'll get more of a feeling where they're at right now. But the Ten of Swords is a kind of a, it's a heavier energy. Pile fours person what are they thinking and feeling towards pile four please in this connection all right we got the four pentacles we have the six of swords in reverse we have the world in reverse I feel like this person's deactivated and then the five of pentacles in reverse. Okay. So if your person is what you, if you've ever heard of attachment theory or attachment system theory, um, you think about the push pull dynamic between that's common in many relationships where one person is, is always chasing. And then once they catch what they're chasing, they seem to pull away. Um, that is indicative of a, a, an avoidant attachment system. And then the person that they chase and pull away from is usually an anxious attached person. Okay. This person feels deactivated right now. Um, and so what I mean by that is like when, when they're activated is when they're chasing you. When they're activated is when um, they can see a future with you, they're missing you, they're longing for your presence, they're wanting intimacy and a connection with you. That's when they're activated. That's when they're chasing and pursuing you. That's when they're calling you nonstop, you know, stopping by your house or anything like that. And then, then you know, that they are able to reconnect, uh, they're, they're able to reestablish that connection and, um, you know, experience intimacy with you, but then there gets a point where they deactivate. And normally it's because, and this is subconscious, you guys, they don't know that this is really what's going on. All of a sudden they go from, you know, seeing a future with you, wanting to spend every day with you to all of a sudden it's like, you know, they need space from you. It's because they do, they want the intimacy, but then they actually fear the intimacy. They fear, um, they fear the autonomy or losing the autonomy. They fear losing their freedom. And so, um, right now they're in, they're deactivated. Right now they're in the space where they, they want space from you. They're kind of, they withdrawn their, they have withdrawn their energy from this connection. Um, yeah, like right now, they're just doing their own thing. Um, and this feels like this is pretty much what your experience of them has been in this connection. It's very common, you guys. It's very common. This dynamic in relationships is very, very common. Um, let's get some more information on pile threes per, or pile fours person. I keep saying pile three. So what that's telling me, pile four, um, and this is true. There is probably a lot of um, messages for you in pile three as well, because um, there is some synchronicity here, some synchronicity. Um, like the person in pile three, that person was also um, very clearly somebody who was anxiously, uh, sorry, avoidantly attached, avoidant attachment. Let's get some more information for pile uh, from pile four's person. I didn't drop any. All right. 
We've got pawn or victim. We've got um, character support. We've got hot or fire and ice conflict. And that this is the perfect representation of the push-pull dynamic of what it's like to be with someone who is, you know, a textbook avoidant. Okay, that that's it. Um, and just like I told pile uh, three, look under pile three's timestamp because um, there I left a. Uh, a link there for a book called Attached. If you haven't already read it or you don't know what attachment systems are, I would highly recommend that you look into it because um, it's going to depersonalize what this person does, okay? It's going to make it to where you're, you're not making it about yourself and you're going to realize it's not about you. It's fully about them. This is something that has been in existence before they ever met you. It's been in existence while they were with you, and it's still in existence now, uh, whether they are with you or somebody else, okay? There's not going to be some magic unicorn that comes along and completely heals this attachment system within them. It doesn't matter how perfect um, the next person may be. If that happens, pile four, um, this attachment system is always going to be there, okay? They're going to pull the same dynamic with someone else as as they've been doing it doing with you all right let's get two more cards from pile force person please here we've got wetlands wetlands mired and then we got chaos and confusion yeah there's i i see why you decided to retreat because this was taking way too much of a toll on um on your mental health, your emotional health, your, your spiritual health even, and maybe even your physical health. I mean, this person, when they're activated, they can be very charming. They can be very supportive. I mean, they can be your best friend. Like they'll do anything for you. And then once they're deactivated, it's like you can't get a hold of them to save your life. And that's just how people with this particular attachment system are. That's how they are. It's a defense mechanism. You guys really should read upon it if you haven't before. It'll put so much stuff into perspective for you. All right, what can Pile 4 expect in regards to the outcome of this connection at this time? That's too many cards. Let's get one card for Pile 4. What's the outcome they can expect? Pile 4. What can Pile 4 expect? What outcome can Pile 4 expect regarding this connection with their person? wedding this situation involves marriage before I say anything about this though I'm gonna wait and pull some more cards okay um, yeah let's hold off on that for a second here we go let's get some more of these cards all right pile four pile four's person inside into pile four's person So we have 8th house energy, Libra energy, and then we got a sextile energy. Which these two together really are kind of, and actually this whole, the whole, the whole trio of this energy is very interesting because 8th house, okay, besides the obvious, you know, 8th house can be about um, sexuality, it can talk about, you know, um, secrets things that are hidden shadows all of that stuff but it also I, i'm thinking of shared resources there is kind of like a share like a maybe the two of you have a very strong sexual chemistry or sexual connection um and the fact that we've got support here and then we have support here coming through as well I don't know if the two of you may have been friends before this connection happened or maybe uh, there was some kind of a connection with them prior to becoming romantically involved. And it may also be that that's like this person, regardless, 
of, I think that's what it is. Regardless of what happens to this connection, this person still wants you in their life. Like I feel like they see, they see your worth, they see your value, they see what you can bring to the table and they're not wanting to lose, like if, if you guys can't be romantically involved or involved in the way that you have been involved, they still want you to be a part of their life because it's like they can still see a mutual, like collaboration keeps coming through. Like the two, like the two of you together could make something beautiful together, whether it's a project, working together, um, maybe the two of you have uh, a really strong uh, like intellectual chemistry or just chemistry in general. Um, like I'm really picking up that a lot of you, when the two of you, when you and your person are together, it's like you can just talk for hours or you guys just have the funnest time together just because the two of you click and you guys have a certain kind of chemistry and they're not wanting to lose that. And you are very beautiful and very, you're very beautiful and they do find you very sexually attractive and very seductive. Yeah. Okay, so we're kind of narrowing down on what this is meaning here. Um, no, we're not doing that yet. Let's get, here we go. Do some of these. Pile fours person. Solitude. Yeah, they're just wanting to be alone right now. Uh, like I said, they're 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 deactivated, so they're in that mind frame where you know they're enjoying their freedom. Not that not that pile four. You know you. It's hard to explain. It's not that you were suffocating. In fact, I pick up that you were very much able to give them the space that they wanted. Um, but that's just not how people with an anxious attachment system, not anxious, I keep saying anxious. That's just not how people with an avoidant attachment work, okay? It's nothing that you did wrong. It's nothing that you, you know, could have done differently. That's not how it is. Um, but they're really enjoying their freedom and being single. And I'm not saying that like they're dating other people or anything like that. They're just... They're enjoying not having to text somebody at a certain time, um, not having to show up in a certain way, which is sounds very selfish, and, and it is, you know, but that you have to see that outside of um, what you're trying to make it mean about you and just see that this is the inner workings of this person. And it's the same with everyone who is avoidant attachment, okay? Let's get one more card from this pile or one card from this pile for uh, pile four. One card from this deck from pile four. Benefactor, grace and generosity. And actually this wanted to come up, um, this wanted to come up reversed, which this deck does do reversals. So that is saying that this person is in that space of being very selfish right now. When it comes to, you know, this connection with you. And it sucks because it feels like, and maybe you're not really doing that much right now or anymore, but it feels like, especially when they're in this mode of being deactivated, like you have to walk on eggshells. Like you're afraid to reach out and even you know, like you're afraid to even ask to see how they're doing because then if they don't respond to you for a day or two, that just kind of sends you into an, a spiral of, of anxiety. But yeah, so they're deactivated. They're in their selfish mode right now. And they're, it's all about them. And it always really is kind of all about them. But again, that's just... Um, that's the inner workings of somebody with an avoidant attachment system. All right, let's get some messages directly from Pile Four's person to Pile Four. And so we've got the Ace of Pentacle coming up. Uh, gossip only hurts more. Let's get a few more. Let's get three more for Pile Four. What messages does Pile Four's person have directly to them, please? 
uh, this, oh wow, this says you make me want to do bad things, and I say oh wow because this came up right next to it, sex with you. So you guys do have a very strong sexual chemistry. They are very, very sexually attracted to you. It may be even a situation where um, you may, and they may have even told you this, that um, you're the best sex they ever had. If you haven't had that, if you haven't done that with this person yet, this is, this, they're wanting you like that. Thoughts of you, uh, sexual thoughts of you preoccupy their mind. Let's get one more card for pile four. like they're um, they're focusing on some kind of a new pentacles usually stand for you know materialistic things a lot of the times it can stand for business endeavors new businesses a new career path or things of that nature which could very well be um, the case and this is what people do people that have an avoidant attachment system do when they deactivate they completely focus on something completely unrelated to um, commitments all right so this person is focusing on something it could be a home a project that they're doing at their home uh, a new business endeavor um, it could be decorating their place something of that so they're it, it, they're start blah, blah, they are starting <laughs> they're starting something new some kind of a new project or a new endeavor in the area of finances um, you know materialistic types of things okay um, it doesn't necessarily have to be you know like they're starting school or a new workshop or they're you know starting to um, take up a new skill or a new hobby or anything like that but they are starting something new that is somewhere around within the materialistic realm, okay? Um, as they remain deactivated, and I'm not liking the gossip, the gossip only hurts more, let me, and this says reach out. All right, so I'm gonna pull some more cards. And what's really throwing me, and I might have to throw some, uh, Pull it some tarot for as far as the 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 reading goes. I don't want to say um, without a shadow of a doubt that this person is like the two of you are going to end up like getting married. I mean, I would love to say that without a shadow of a doubt for you guys, but I don't want to say it if it's not true and then get your guys' hopes up. Okay, um, let's get some more messages from Pile uh, Four's person to them. Pile Four's person to them. And maybe this gossip only is like your your person's way of telling you like, you know, they're not done. Okay, so they're not actually done with this connection. And they know it. So they're not wanting you to go and rip their reputation to shreds. Like, not, don't go to your friends and family and tell them all the bad things that this person did. And this is just what they're telling you, okay? This is the energy from them that's coming through to you. Because they... Um, even though they, they, they are deactivated, they know that the two of you are, are probably going to reconnect again at some point. Um, and they may even know, even though they deactivate and they get scared of intimacy, they may even know that you are the kind of person that they would like to marry, but they are just, it, it scares the shit out of them, okay? Messages to pile four from their person, please. Uh, it says I want to be more than friends <laughs> like if that's the only way that they can have you in your life like if you decide that you're done with this dynamic once and for all and you decide to like cut it off you know they, they're willing to be friends with you because they want to keep you in their life but they don't want to be more than friends and with the wedding card here it's like they you know it's not just a sexual thing for them you know, they want to be more than friends and they want to be more than a friends with benefits type of thing. Okay. Let's get two more cards from this deck for pile four from their person. Aw. I love you. So deep down inside, they do know 
you're basically the one. So I am going to tell you, Pile 4, you are someone that they can see themselves spending the rest of their life with, but for some reason, and it is part of that attachment system that they are dealing with, um, this kind of intimacy, this kind of commitment, um, subconsciously scares them, okay? So I have known avoidance to get married, um, but getting married does not change the avoidance attachment system, okay? Um, I will tell you that. Um, if you get married to somebody or you move in to, with somebody who is an avoidant attachment, um, I will say that your anxieties will ease because you're with that person constantly. So, you know, there isn't so much of a push-pull dynamic on your side. Um, you may just, you know, in the long run, unless they're willing to do the work, uh, there can be feelings of disconnect, okay? And that's just part of them activating, deactivating, you know, things like that. Let's get one more card from this deck for pile four, please. Yeah, and it says, I couldn't let you get close to me. And that is hallmark of someone who is um, in, you know, dealing with an avoidant attachment system. Let's get three cards from this deck for pile four. Direct messages from pile four's person, please. I saved your texts and messages. <laughs> yeah. So, okay, let me just get a couple more cards and then I'll finish my thoughts about that pile four. Let's get two more cards from this deck for pile four, please. Do I still have a chance? Now, only you can answer that pile four. One more card from this deck for pile four, please. Says, I know you don't feel the same and this is their fear they're kind of wondering like if everything that you guys have gone through up until this point has really caused you to disconnect from them permanently and, and that may ha that may be true you may be actually feeling that way um, hold on you guys So even when they're deactivated, they have pockets, they have moments or pockets of time where they do, they are missing you, but they're not quite sure if they're ready to like reestablish connection yet. And that's how they connect with you. They look at your guys' pictures together. They look at your messages. They look at your texts and things like that. Um, and they may even be like checking up on you via social media and stuff as well. Um, I'm going to pull one more card and then I'm going to, um, kind of give a last word on this karmic relationship here because that's kind of the only thing that's making me like mm, I don't know because karmic relationships are not the same as soulmate or, or twin flame relationships okay uh, let's get one card from this deck for pile four. Oh, you know what um, yeah let's let's clarify this karmic relationship as far as what pile four um what do they need to know about this karmic relationship? Pile four, what do you need to know about this karmic relationship? We've got an energetic shift. I am dynamic and powerful. My mindset creates my reality. So there may be a shift within your thinking or your feeling towards this relationship. So a karmic relationship often is one that is meant to trigger anything within you that needs to be healed that is keeping you blocked from living your best life or keeping you blocked from being able to progress along your path. And karmic relationships often, I don't, well, I mean, that's what's coming up. Karmic, karmic relationships often end I don't, you know, tragically, badly, um, in a heartbreaking way, they rarely end up in a fashion where the two of you guys live happily ever after. And so right now, like this person does see themselves with you. They can see them spending the rest of their life with you, but they're just kind of that, they're having that inner struggle. 
I'm just, I'm very cautious to say that the two of you, even if you do get married, even if you do live together, have kids together, I'm very cautious to say that the two of you are going to live happily ever after because I'm not seeing that here. Um, so just proceed with caution pile four, okay? Um, you know, I'm always wanting to look out for you guys. I I've been in a couple of karmic relationships myself, and even though those people decided finally to commit to me, it, it didn't end well in the long run, all right? And I'm not saying that because that's how it's happened to me, it's gonna happen to you. I'm just saying to, you know, be on guard. You know, watch out for yourself. Um, the best way to approach situations like this is to make sure that you just have sturdy boundaries, um, not to compromise your boundaries, and to always look out for yourself, and most definitely learn how to um, fill your own cup first, okay? Um, and then who knows how, you know, this situation will turn out. All right, Pile 4, those were your messages. I hope that you enjoyed them. If you did, please do me a favor and smash that like button, comment, share, subscribe if you feel led to do so. Uh, thank you for spending your time with me here today. I, I honor the fact that you're willing to spend your time with me. It's it's finite and it's, <laughs> it's precious. I do realize that. And um, I'm so looking forward to reading again for you very soon. Thanks, Pile 4. Take care.